Well, welcome back to uh, these pre-section videos, trying to get you guys uh, started on the right foot in terms of understanding the material that we are about to cover. This section is section uh, 3.4, Exponential Growth and Decay. So, now that you've learned all about how to take derivatives of these exponentials and logarithmic functions and stuff, we're going to go back and look at some word problem applications of this stuff. And um, one of those word problem applications is these exponential growth and exponential decay, which is also known as half-life style problems. And uh, it's probably uh, formulas that you guys have used before in previous math classes like uh, Algebra 2, Pre-Calculus, College Algebra, and the like, where you use this PERT-like looking formula. So when you have a population growth, you know, population grows, uh, and, and where the formula comes from is this fact, that population grows at a rate proportional to itself. And that being the case, you have actually something called a differential equation. Now this section is not going to get deep into the differential equations, but what you have is this. The rate of change of the population, which is known as the derivative, dp over dt, is equal to, is proportional to, which is equal to some kind of constant times the population p. So at any given time, how fast is that population growing is dependent upon the population at the particular time that you want to analyze how fast it's growing. And like I said, up to a, a, a equation, so there's a constant of integration right here. I mean, a, a, a constant of proportionality here. So dp over dt is equal to k times p. When you have this style of differential equation, it's an equation that has a derivative in it, uh, what we talk about is the solution in, in this case is this formula p naught e to the kt. This is the solution that solves this differential equation. When I take derivative of this guy, and I uh, actually, it, that will be equal to k times this actual formula. So this is the solution to a differential equation. Yes, we have a whole class on differential equations, so we're not, like I said, we're not going to get that deep into the concept of differential equations in here. We're going to get that deep into the formulas we're expected to know. So if I have a population growth problem, here's the formula that we do expect you guys to have memorized. P of t equals p naught, p sub zero, p of zero, times e to the kt, where p of t stands for population after t years. P of zero is initial populations. Now, let me say years. Years, maybe if you're doing uh, petri dishes and uh, bacteria, maybe days or hours or something or other. So this is whatever time frame it is. So P of T is the population after T years. P naught is the initial population. K is called the growth uh, constant, which is going to be a positive constant here. And T is time, typically measured in years, but it's going to be measured in whatever units they talk about, months or days, if you happen to have some kind of bacteria or something or other. Now, the difference between population growth and population or uh, population decay or half-life type of problems is this. It's the same formula. P of t equals P of 0 e to the k times t. P of t, we said population, or in this case, it may be not population. It may be an amount. It may have a population if it's decaying or whatever amount you're talking about. P of t is the initial population or amount. But K, the difference, look, it's the same formula. But the difference between these two things is that the K is going to be negative. When the K is negative, you have a decay. When the K is positive, you have a growth. So when you look at these particular problems and the K is positive, it grows. When you analyze when the K is negative, it's going to decay and start going down. And T is time measured in years or whatever amount of time that you have to be playing with here. So first thing we want you guys to do is for our pre-chapter quiz is to get familiar with these equations. So here's the equation. P of t equals P naught e to the k times t. I want you to solve this for t. Well, so notice where the variable is located at. P of t equals P sub zero e to the k times t. The t is located in the exponent of an e. So this goes back to this is why we needed all that pre-chapter one chapter, I'm sorry, chapter three, chapter four, uh, sorry, chapter th one, chapter two, in section three uh, that we're looking at that uh, these exponential and logarithmic stuff. The variable is in the exponent. So I want to solve for this particular exponent. So my first move is to divide by p naught. Get the term with the variable by himself. So I get p of t divided by p naught equals e to the kt. I know there are no numbers in this thing. That's okay. We still want you guys to manipulate these equations. 
Now I've got an E in the problem. What kills off E's so I can bring down that exponent? There's only one thing in the universe that kills off, uh, kills off bases and brings down exponent, and that's logs. And seeing I have an E in the problem, there's a special log I want to use, and that is the natural log. So what I do to one side, I do to the other. So I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. And the natural log and E end up canceling and bringing on the exponent. So this gives me the natural log of P of T divided by P naught equals K times T. And then I want to divide both sides by K to get the T by himself. And this gives me my solution. T is equal to the natural log of P of T divided by P naught all over K. And here's my solution for this population growth or decay. Don't know what K is actually equal to. Population growth or K formula, solve for T. Now, again, some more practice here. Solve the equation 9,000 is equal to 1,500 e to the kt. Again, we still have some variables in this thing, but again, I want you to solve for t. Well, notice where the t is located at. It's 9,000 equals 1,500 e to the k times t. Again, the t is located in the exponent of an e, so the first thing you always want to do is get that e by himself. So I'm going to divide by 1,500 on both sides. This cancels. And 9,000 divided by 1,500 is 6. So that gives, this gives me the equation 6 equals e to the kt. And once again, I've got this e where the variable that I'm trying to solve for is in the exponent of an e. So I need to kill off the base and bring down the exponent. The only thing in the world that kills off e's is natural log. So take the natural log on both sides. The natural log of e cancels. So that leaves me with the natural log of 6 equals k times t. And then solving it for t, I'm going to divide by k on both sides. And this gives me my solution. t equals the natural log of 6 divided by k. That's what we're looking for. Okay, I hope that's been helpful. All right, but there's some more formulas, and there'll be a, quite a few more formulas than what I'm going over here. But the other formula that you actually should have some kind of uh, familiarity to is these uh, interest, compound interest and uh, uh, formulas. So this is what we call regular compound interest. The regular compound interest formula is the formula A equals P times 1 plus R over N raised to the NT where A stands for your future value, P stands for the initial value or principal, R is your interest rate, and remember, this is a mathematical formula, so with interest rates, if they give you in percentages, percentages for people who can't do math, move the decimal place two places to the, the left and turn it into a decimal before plugging it into a formula. N is the number of times a year you compound. So if they say words like compounded quarterly, N equals four. Compounded monthly, N equals 12. Compounded daily, n equals 365. Compounded annually, n equals 1. n is the number of times a year you compound. And t, being business time, t is time measured typically in years. Okay? Now, this is for regular compounding. Now, if you take compounding to an extreme, which is earning interest on interest, you have something called compounded continuously. Compounded continuously is this a, a equals p e to the rt, the old PERT formula. Hopefully you've seen that in your pre-calculus, high school algebra 2 style uh, cal cal classes, maybe even college algebra. Uh, a equals p e to the rt. Again, a is for the future value. p is the principal or initial value of your amount. r is the interest rate. Again, it's a mathematical formula, so no percentages. You had to convert it to decimal, and t is in time. So let's see if we can use these two formulas here to, to see if we can get some problems solved here. Find the accumulated value of an investment of $120,000 at an interest rate of 4.5% if it is compounded monthly for five years. Step one, re-problem. Step two, re-problem again and decide which kind of problem it is and what, which formula you should use. Find the accumulated value, which is find A, if an investment of $120,000, that's your principal, the amount of money I'm investing, 100, so that's P, $120,000.
at an interest rate, this is R, of 4.5%, but remember, no percentages, this is 0 0.045. If it's compounded monthly, now compounded monthly, that means N would be how many times is monthly per year? That's 12. And the time is for five years. T is five. So since we're talking about compounded monthly, that's a regular compound. My A equals P times one plus R over N raised to the NT is my formula. So let's write it down. A equals P times one plus R over N raised to the NT. Plugging in my numbers, 120,000, that's my principal, times one plus the interest rate, 0.045, 0 0.045, divided by N, which is 12, raised to the 12 times 5. Now at this point, it's all about bunch, crunching a bunch of numbers on the calculator, so let me put my calculator up here, and let's do this. Now what I really want to show you on the calculator is don't forget to put parentheses around your exponent. So you've got $120,000 times parentheses 1 plus 0.045 divided by 12 close parentheses raised to the parentheses around your exponent especially if you have the old operating system of the T84 and don't forget to put parentheses around the exponent 12 times 5 close parentheses enter and how much money do we have in the account after five years 150,000 $215 and 50 cent rounding it to the nearest penny. So there's my solution. Now compare that to the next problem. Find the accumulated value of an investment of $120,000 at an interest rate of 4.5 if it's a percent if it is compounded continuously for five years. Compounded continuously means I'm going to be using my A equals PERT formula, P E to the RT. Again, the principal hasn't changed. It's still $120,000. Interest rate is still 4.5%. And remember, that's 0 0.045, two decimal places to the left. And time is going to be, again, five years. So A equals 120000 e to the 0 0.045 times 5. So again, plugging in on my calculator here, 120,000 times e raised to the parentheses around your exponent, 0 0.045 times 5, and I end up getting 150,278 dollars and 73 cent running it to the nearest penny and you will notice if you compare the two I earned a, a few dollars more about uh, 60 dollars more money by the compounded continuous than I do from the compounded monthly the more times you compound the more time somebody's putting money in your account, the more you like it, and the more time you compound, earning interest on interest, the best type of compounding is going to be compounding continuously. It actually earns you a few dollars more. So, again, we're going to be going through this particular section, not just with these particular formulas and the, uh, um, the uh, population growth and decay and half-life formulas and stuff, We'll be doing some Newton's Law of Cooling and doing some rates of change of these particular formulas. And remember, the word rate of change means derivative. So uh, uh, this is the onset of uh, Chapter one, uh, 3.4, Exponential Growth and Decay. And the idea is it's actually coming from what we call a differential equation. So we're setting you up for future math classes, but it's not that bad. It's going back and looking at word problems once again. So hope this has been helpful, and I'll see you in the next video.